Okay, I want to go through another example of using the graph of f prime to classify extrema and possible points of inflection given the fact that our original function f is a continuous function. That's a very important point. So the original function is continuous even though f prime is not continuous. That means there must be some sort of cusp or um, you know, some sort of sharp corner at this location and this location. So the first thing we want to look at is let's look at critical points for f. So we're going to look at places where f prime doesn't exist or equal to zero. So we see one at the origin and we see it goes from negative to positive means decreasing to increasing. So that's a relative extrema. Here's another critical point, but it goes from increasing to increasing. So that's not a relative extrema. Uh, this location right here is another critical point, but it doesn't change, f prime doesn't change sign, so it's not an extrema. Here's another extreme value right here, um, and it goes from increasing to decreasing, so by the first root of the test, that's an extreme value. And then we have, at this location, it, it, the first root is equal to zero, and it goes from decreasing to increasing, or in other words, f prime goes from negative to positive, so that's an extreme value. So we have three extreme three relative extrema for the original function f. So immediately we're down to a 50-50 choice with b and c. And so with that, you can make a guess, but all we have to determine is there three inflection points or four inflection points. Now inflection points are gonna be locations where f prime goes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So we see here it goes from increasing to decreasing. So this is actually the location of an inflection point. So there's one. We go from decreasing to increasing, there's two. Increasing to decreasing, there's three. Decreasing to increasing, we see four right there, and so then we make our choice C.